Our next topic is orthogonal diagonalization. But first, let's talk about when a square matrix is orthogonal. It needs to satisfy one of the three conditions. So you only need to check one of them, but they all imply each other. Let's call this matrix P. So P is invertible, and the inverse is equal to the transpose. Or we could say that the rows of P are orthonormal. Orthogonal rows aren't enough. We need orthonormal rows where the norm or the length is one, and the columns of P are also orthonormal. Two quick properties. If P is orthogonal, so is P inverse. If P is orthogonal, we could write P inverse equals the transpose of P. If we take the inverse of both sides, then we could rewrite transpose and the inverse, and this shows that P inverse is orthogonal. If P and Q are orthogonal matrices, then the product PQ is orthogonal as well. Since we know P and Q are individually orthogonal, we know Q inverse equals Q transpose, and P inverse equals P transpose. Now let's multiply these together. Q inverse P inverse would equal Q transposed P transposed. Then we can factor out the negative one and the T. When we do this, the matrix multiplication switches order, and we can see that PQ is in fact orthogonal. A matrix A is considered orthogonally diagonalizable when there exists P inverse AP that equals a diagonal matrix where P is orthogonal. If P is orthogonal, we know that the inverse is equal to the transpose, so we could equally write this as P transpose AP equals D. This is true when A is symmetric. This means that the elements across the diagonal are equal, or a more mathematical way to put this would be that the matrix is equal to its transpose. We could equivalently say that A has an orthonormal set of n eigenvectors. In other words, Rn has an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors of A. If a matrix is symmetric, the distinct eigenvectors are automatically orthogonal, where the multiplicity is 1. If we're asked to find an orthogonal P such that PT or P inverse AP is a diagonal matrix, here are the steps to take. Start by finding the eigenvalues, which are the roots of the characteristic polynomial. Secondly, find a basis of each eigenspace. These will be comprised of the eigenvectors. Next, orthogonalize and normalize each basis. We can do this using the Gram-Schmidt algorithm. Lastly, we can build our orthogonal P and the corresponding D that is similar to our matrix A. Now let's try these steps. Let's find an orthogonal P that diagonalizes this matrix A. To begin, we need the eigenvalues. We have no zeros in our matrix, so to generate at least one zero, we can do row one minus row three. Next, we can factor out lambda minus nine from the first row. And now why don't we just expand along the first row? First, we have negative one to the exponent. We're in our first row, first column, so one plus one, times one times the matrix, plus negative one to the exponent, first row, third column. Next, we can compute this. We have lambda minus eight times lambda minus five, minus four, minus two times two, minus four times lambda minus eight. Now let's collect like terms. Next, we can factor out lambda, and we'll be left with lambda minus 9 squared. This means that our two eigenvalues are 0 and 9. The first has a multiplicity of 1, and the second has a multiplicity of 2. Next, let's find the eigenvectors. To begin, let's plug in 0. Now let's reduce row 2 divided by 2, and switch row 1 and row 2. Next, row 2 plus 5 row 1 and row three minus four, row one. Next, to eliminate the bottom row, let's do row three plus row two. And then for our next leading one, we'll do row two divided by negative 18. Lastly, row one plus four, row two. Next, we can say that our third variable, let's say C is a parameter. This means A minus C equals zero, and B minus one half C equals zero. The solution to this homogeneous system is x is c times, let's isolate for a, we get 1, for b we get 
1 half and c is the parameter, so that's 1. We can now say that the corresponding eigenspace of this vector 0 is the span of, we could either say this vector or to eliminate fractions we could say 2, 1, 2. Let's do the same for our second eigenvalue, 9. Row 1 minus 2 row 2, row 3 minus 2 row 2, and then we can switch the location of row 1 and row 2 just so that our zero rows are on the bottom. Lastly, row one divided by two. We can say b and c are parameters. Our equation would be a plus one half b plus c equals zero. Let's isolate a. a is negative one half b minus c. Now let's write our solution. We can factor out b and c. b, we would have negative one half, then one, zero. For our second solution, we'll have negative one, zero, one. We can now write that the eigenspace of nine for our matrix A is the span negative one, two, zero. I multiplied this by two, negative one, zero, one. These three eigenvectors are not already orthogonal, so we'll need to first orthogonalize and normalize them. Let's say that E1 is X1, and let's normalize that. E2 will be X2 minus the projection on N1, X2 dot N1 times N1, the portion that N1 has already covered. In this case, these vectors are already orthogonal, so their dot product is zero. We have zero N1. We can normalize E1 right away then. One over root five times E2 and E3 will be X3 minus the portion N1 and N2 have already covered. Let's do X3 dot N1. These vectors are also orthogonal. Lastly, X3 dot N2. We can pull out this scalar when we're doing the dot product, and we end up with negative one times negative one, just one over root five. One over root five times our vector N2. This will be 1 fifth times negative 4, negative 2, 5. Now we can normalize this. 1 over the norm would be 1 fifth times root 4 squared plus 2 squared plus 5 squared times the vector E3. And now we found N1, N2, and N3. These are now orthonormal vectors that span the eigenspace of A. This means that we can form our matrix P and our diagonal matrix will have the eigenvalues in the same order, so 0, 9, 9. And to check that our answer is correct, we should have, since P is orthogonal, P transposed AP is equal to this diagonal matrix. If we transpose P, we switch the rows and the columns. Next, we can multiply the first two matrices together. And if you do this multiplication, we end up with 0, 0, 0, 0, 9, 0, and 0, 0, 9, which is just what we wanted. Remember that in order for P to be orthogonal, we need to have orthonormal rows and columns.